All right, and so welcome everyone. And so I would say it's a general assumption for most people at this conference that you want to go to space. You want to see people going to space. You would like to see more engagement with space. You would like to see it become a greater part of all of our lives. And that's a great idea. We would love that as well, except for the fact that it's incredibly expensive and we can't quite afford it. So what we have pictured here is the Viper mission, which, as many of you know, is going to explore water ice or Yes, water ice on the um, lunar south pole. Uh, this mission costs $433 million. Now, this is an incredibly expensive mission and across the entire space industry, we're looking at about a $300 billion market. The majority of this money comes from launch services, satellite services, as many of you are very well aware. And um, we believe that there is a paradigm shift coming. This has been one of the things that has kept a lot of smaller groups out of space so far is the incredibly high price of missions, the ability to support a national government to get your project approved, the ability to get approved by a major launch provider. These are all things that tend to slow everyone down. And so for a bit of perspective on Moondow, which we'll get into a lot more of during the second half of this talk, um, Moondow is a group that raised about $8 million when it first started and had a max valuation of over $100 million during its uh, during the peak of crypto earlier this year. Um, uh, peak of Ethereum, sorry. To, uh, we'll get a bit more into that later. So some of you may be able to do the math all, uh, in your head here, but $100 million is less than $433 million, and it's less than a habitat on the moon is going to cost. But so Web3 has been doing very well at raising money. So I said Moondow raised over $8 million initially. This NFT raised over $91 million. Um, this comes uh, from, this is an artist named Pac, and it's his mass banner NFT. And so this NFT sold over a quarter of a million copies, beginning at $299 a piece. Now, this is not something necessarily space related. This is a picture of a couple circles and people spent over $91 million on it. Now to us, that's a very illustrative translation of the value that people believe exists within these items and its translation into hard currency. And as the starship begins to progress, this is something that will help to show that the difference between commercial fundraising and access to space is not as far apart as people tend to believe. And so a big thing helping to enable that beyond just the Starship is the commercial services that NASA has, or that the federal government has been aggressively funding that NASA is actively engaging with now. And that presents an alternative to a lot of the traditional way that space development has been practiced in the US. So a couple of companies that are working on this and just to kind of discuss a range of services that are COTS available or will be COTS available by 2030, a fairly important date for Moondow. We're looking at groups like Interstellar Lab, which just in the past month launched their first pilot greenhouse, which is um, expected to be part of the Artemis program, as far as we are aware. Um, there are groups like AI Space Factory that is that are currently building uh, space-compatible habitats on Earth. They have also won design contests with NASA for their designs for a Martian habitat using 3D printed material. And something that not many people know is they've got a similar program called LINA, L-I-N-A, that is for a 3D printed uh, habitat on the moon using lunar regolith. So these are companies that offer themselves as a commercial service provider that anyone can engage with, whether or not you are part of a national space agency, whether or not you are part of a flagship mission, or whether or not the decadal survey has even heard of you. So it's something that we're very aware of. As many of you have seen here, there are people out there building their own spacesuits. There are all sorts of groups developing these various systems that we need to progress to the end point of getting humans on the moon in an affordable fashion. And so from the Web3 side, there has been quite a bit of development as well that we think is very significant towards enabling this future and helping to translate a lot of that uh, inspiration, that passion, and that belief in the value of these projects into a tangible asset that can be engaged with regardless of your affiliation with governments or existing space program. So Moondow, as you're gonna hear a lot more about, is in a group that tends to be a bit of a parent organization towards a lot of these processes, essentially driven by a cause, trying to engage with these different groups and make that more possible. Um, Kudos and Space Chain are both uh, groups that are enabling trade and uh, essentially taking a lot of the existing financial practices and moving it into a lighter, more accessible, more decentralized process that anyone can engage with. 
Um, Alpha per se is another group that we have spoken with as well that is looking into the tokenization of assets. And groups like City Dow and Decentraland are managing the sale of land assets through web-based web -based groups. And other groups like Copernicus Space. Copernic space are also helping to provide this open access to space in a way that will be non-biased towards government entities, non-biased towards who is engaging in a project. And we think that this decentralized approach going directly from the funding, going from the origination, is a key to decentralized access to space as a whole. And we think it's something that will greatly contribute to the collaboration of different space projects, if not within the project itself, within the greater ecosystem of these groups going to the moon, going to Mars, or going to different places. And so the moon in particular has a very compelling reason why we need to remain collaborative and why we need to assess what others are doing and assess the general framework in which we're approaching things. Because as many of you know, the uh, peaks of eternal light on both the North and South Pole of the moon are the primary target regions for colonization, for settlement. Because these do not require nuclear power, you're able to set up and use solar panels, a very familiar technology, uh, low, regulatory, or low regulation technology that can satisfy your power needs. But in this image here, the peaks of eternal light are the cyan colored regions, somewhat hard to see because there are very few of them. It is a very limited resource on the moon. So sunlight is not something we typically consider a limited resource, but given the two week night cycle, you need to have access to these and it needs to be done in a way that does not further conflict over a scarcity of resources. And so, we believe that DAOs are a great alternative to this, are a great contributor towards this whole process and a very fundamental part of this ecosystem. And I'm going to turn it over to Fabian to talk a bit more about what a DAO is and specifically about Moon DAO. Okay. Technical difficulties here, guys. Thank you, sir. So my name is Fabian. I'm going to talk about Munda. By show of hands, how many of you guys own a uh, cryptocurrency? Okay. Uh, by show of hands, how many of you guys uh, own an NFT? Okay, a few of you guys. Okay, awesome. Perfect. Um, so I'm going to bring it back to the old school and come back to the real, the real basics of what a DAO is. So I'll actually start with definitions. So a DAO, a DAO stands for a decentralized autonomous organization. And the best definition that I've found for this um, is a, a group of people using blockchain technology to design and govern collective decision-making over shared assets on the internet. So basically using the blockchain, which is just using uh, the internet technology to keep track of who owns what and then also keep track of who voted for what within that community um, so think of it uh, think of it as a uh, hybrid cooperative crowdsourcing uh, mechanism so and then an nft i asked for some of you guys earlier an nft um, i'll refer to nfts in general but that stands for non-fungible tokens um, and I'll, I'll say uh, NFTs, but it also stands for fungible tokens. And all of that is, it's a smart contract code on the blockchain that stores information related to ownership and voting. So it's basically a ledger. So think of it as your accountant or your bookkeeper, keeping track of where you're spending your money. Um, in, in this case, it's, there's a ledger showing who owns, one, who owns what within a community, and then also who has voted for what within a community. So as a community, you vote for, let's say, actually, people are voting right now as we speak uh, as to whether or not pay for us to be here. We got our proposal in kind of late, so we're <laughs> keeping our fingers crossed. So our community is literally using their tokens to vote yes or no. Send Fabian and Staley to Mars Society. Um, if it's a no, then we're on the hook for, for, the, for the full bill, which, which is fine. We, we love being here either way. We love Munda. Um, so that, that gives you an idea of what, uh, what I'll be talking about uh, next. So why use blockchain instead of traditional cooper, uh, traditional cooperatives and and in, you know for that matter why not use traditional llcs 
or traditional corporate, you know, corporations. Uh, this is a very new idea. It's only been around for a few years. Uh, to give you an idea, Moondow started December. So we're not even toddlers yet. We started December of last year. So not even a year ago. Um, within a month, like Silly said, we raised about $8 million from people that literally met on Twitter, Twitter and Discord. Um, and then we basically rallied around the idea of getting to the moon. And and I'm I'm going to ask by the by the end of this I'm going to ask you guys to pull out your your phones um, and mark your calendar for New Year's Eve 2030. The idea is that we're going to bring some champagne, we're going to bring some speakers, and we're going to have a party uh, on the moon. So 2030. Um, and it, you know we're actually very serious about this. this. Is actually in our constitution for Munda. We actually wrote that in there. Um, but as far as the blockchain. Um, so the blockchain through through the NFTs tracks membership. So in Mundao, uh, we're members because we own this token. It's a, it's called Mooney. Uh, you can go on our website. It it, it breaks it down even further. Um, and then also with this token, it shows that we're members. And then it also gives us the opportunity to vote on whatever. One of the proposals that we actually passed as a community was actually we as a community, we use those $8 million to buy a ticket from, from Blue Origin. And we sent somebody on a Blue Origin rocket ship back in August. Uh, so we already sent one astronaut uh, to, you know, to the stratosphere, uh, and then he came right back down. We're sending one more uh, next year. Um, so we've done, you know, a few uh, marketing since the the next projects. We're actually thinking of working on satellites, actually landing stuff on the moon. Um, and okay, so the NFTs are immutable. It just means if, if we're using the pure blockchain technology. Blockchain is a permanent record, a permanent ledger of who owns what. Also, when, when you transfer that, when you sell that, that ledger keeps track of who you sold it to. So it keeps track of who owns what. Um, it's transparent. Anyone can see. You can prove to anyone that you own that, that asset. And then it's private. You can be as private and anonymous about this as you want, or you can be as public as you want. Um, and then, so the A in DAO stands for autonomous. Uh, basically, autonomous, there's a, a lot of definitions and you can interpret it a lot of different ways, but it's basically, in my interpretation of it, um, I think of it as sovereign. So we're a sovereign community governing ourselves. So we literally, about a month ago, we voted and we it took us a couple months. We drafted a constitution that we all agreed to govern ourselves under and we voted on it, passed it. And literally in that constitution, anyone could see it. Uh, we wrote, you know, how our proposals, proposals are going to be set up. Who can propose what? Um, and then all these proposals need to align with our mission of getting to the moon uh, by 2030. Um, also, guys, uh, one of the other side effects, which is I think is the, the best thing about the blockchain and NFTs, is that because it's transparent, it creates its own marketplace. So our tokens, the tokens that I bought in and Mooney, it's called Mooney is our token. Um, I if I if I decided that I don't want to be part of Mundao anymore. I can sell those tokens. You know, I can use that money for something else. And the idea is that if your community builds something cool that other people want to be part of, that the value of your tokens will naturally go up. You know, there's only there's a fixed amount of these tokens, and if you want to be a member, you have to buy one of these tokens. So if we're doing cool things, uh, people are going to want want to be part of the community. They'll 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 have to buy the the token. So um, other uses. Um, Actually, let me back up really quick. So uh, everything that we're doing at Mundao and all the pure DAOs out there, everything is open source. Everyone knows, everyone can jump on there, see what we're doing, see what we're proposing, see what we voted on. And the idea is that this is open source. Anyone can use this. Any one of us can start our own DAO. Uh, any one of us can do a spin up, uh, not a spin up or a spin off, but a spin up and, and actually create our own DAO. So we, we could start Marsdale uh, today. Uh, so it, it's, it, the, the idea is that this is a technology that's open source. Um, it, there's nothing special about Munda. Uh, so anyone can use this. Um, other uses for the blockchain in space that, we're, that we've been experimenting with, and it, a lot of people, not just Munda, not just us, um, one is um, having, your, having an NFT represent title or ownership to your spaceship. So once you buy your rocket ship and you want to prove to someone that it's yours or you want to sell it, you don't have to go through a title company or 
the county's uh, assessor to do all the title insurance, you know, like you'd have to do for your house. Uh, if it's an NFT, you just go on your phone or your computer, you click on your wallet and you transfer your, you know, your rights to a satellite. You can sell fuel to a, a rocket ship uh, that, you know, is, that the idea is that NFTs, it's, it's a blockchain, which is essentially what our banking system is, but our, uh, you know, I, I, I will, um, I, I, I think our banking system is, you know, a little bit not doing very well. I think it's time for it to evolve. And I think this is a natural evolution. That, that's a whole different talk. But uh, um, so the, the other thing um, that you can have be an NFT is patents. So a recipe for a medication can be stored in an NFT, and then you can sell that, you can sell rights to that. Uh, so there's people working on this. There's a, a movement called Decentralized Science, uh, stands for DSI. And there's a lot of people actually already working on this. Um, intellectual property is also, uh, is also um, you can also make that into an NFT. Um, and then part of your, so as, as a community, uh, we, there's ways to become an entity and actually own land here on, here on Earth. Uh, we can own satellites, spaceships. So, so, there's, a, so there, there's ways to have this function in the real practical world as opposed to this is not a metaverse thing. Uh, we're in real life. Uh, so we're using leveraging the blockchain technology for real life. Um, and then finally, the other, the other benefit or the other use for blockchain is that you can fractionalize ownership of assets. One of the ideas that we're playing with is we're actually, we actually put down a, a deposit on, on a satellite uh, as Mundao has. And, and we're trying to figure out what to put on the satellite. Uh, one of the things that we could can do, and we're and we invite everyone to join us. So the cool thing about DAOs is that anyone can join, anyone can leave at any time. Uh, we're trying to figure out what to do with this satellite. We can actually fractionalize if we if there's uh, you know time for a camera or a, some type of sensor. Uh, we can fractionalize it so that people, some people can use it this time of the day, um, or an NFT represents a different time of the day, um, and and then you can. Uh, promote joint ownership from the community. So anyone can participate and, and it's easier to transfer. Again, it creates that natural uh, marketplace. Uh, some challenges, guys. So the one of the biggest uh, cautionary things is that there is no perfect system. And one of the one of the things that, that makes these things really hard is that people are still at the center of this. So um, our current democracy and our, our capitalism society I think has is doing is has brought us done a lot of good things. There's also a lot of negative parts about it, but the fact the fact of the matter is that there's people running it, and you know sometimes we don't make the best choices. Sometimes greed can take get the better best of us. The, uh, you know, using that uh, blockchain is not going to solve for that. So you, so we still need to be you know hold each other accountable. We still need to you know be honest with ourselves and with our community. Um, it's also a very new thing. Like I said, this stuff, we're literally, the, the best analogy that I've heard is that we're building the spaceship as we're flying it, which is uh, not the best way to do it, but the, the reality is that this technology is still being put together. Um, like the wires are still hanging out. It's, uh, um, so it's, it's, uh, it's a little bit tricky. Um, there is no clear regulation uh, as far as, you know, from our government. Um, and complete ownership is overwhelming. When you own an NFT or cryptocurrencies, for those of you guys that know, you are your own bank. So that means that there is no 1-800 number. If you lose your passcodes, uh, that's a real problem. Um, so it, so ownership comes with a lot of responsibility. So we do have to be very prepared, very educated. Um, the biggest thing, that, the biggest challenge that I see with this technology is that it's going to take a paradigm shift or at least uh, a paradigm shift from competition, which is what capitalism is, Nothing wrong with it. That's just what it is. To collaboration, and for me, I was raised as a good old capitalist. I, I have a, a few LLCs. You know, I've, I've functioned in the in the capital society for for quite a while. And for me, it's been hard to think about. You know, so I have to share. I have to go back to kindergarten and actually share. You know, actually like apply what I was taught in kindergarten. That you have to share your crayons. It's it's the same same idea here. Um, it, it's like shared. Uh, ownership also comes with, you know, you have to share your stuff, but it also it, it, it invites people to, you know, bring the best of all of us and, and you know, make it happen. Uh, this is an experiment, just like George Washington 
you know, and founding fathers started this, you know, society. Um, uh, this, it, like, we're literally building constitutions, uh, you know, uh, around this. And again, we're not the only ones, but uh, as far as, you know, Mundo, I think I really believe that we're doing some pretty cool stuff there. So, all right, guys, so mark your calendars on your, you can do it, you can do it on your phone. If you go to, if you go to your phone on uh, New Year's Eve, so December 31, 2030, um, we will actually try to, to live stream it, uh, live stream it back if you can't make it. Um, but, but if, if, but if you, if you're up for it, um, my, my idea would be that we'd have a few dozen people up there and actually, uh, throw a party. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, we have some DJs in the room and some awesome, um, uh, speakers. Anyone can join guys. Uh, so, um, we'll be here all weekend. We can talk about this all day. Uh, and then we will have, um, if you scan these, this is my Twitter. This is unfortunately for better or for worse. Twitter is where most of the conversations around blockchain happen. You have to navigate through a lot of shit posting to get to the good stuff, but it is there. Um, and I'm, I'm also on LinkedIn. You can find me um, and uh, um, uh, Instagram. And we wanted this to be a conversation. So we have about, I think, some nice questions. Thank you, guys. Please. Before the questions, I just wanted to say there are about 2,900 and some change days left, so get on it. Yep. Okay, and one thing I'll to, and I'll just begin to introduce this question, but in the world that I work in, anything that should be secured by software can be defeated by software, and that includes blockchains. Mm. Mm -hmm. Now, so I just wanted to, I've got a plan B for how to organize this thing if somebody suddenly starts breaking into blockchains. That's a really good question. So we don't have a plan B. I'm, I'm glad you bring that up. And, and, and I, I, would, I would play the devil's advocate to, there are, the true blockchains are very hard to, to crack. It's not impossible. And, you know, you know, um, and uh, and that's so that's the the only reason is a uh, immutability is you know blockchains are you know in we 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 were trusting them with literally trillions billions of dollars because they're immutable so far we had you know they've been around since about 2008 or so 2007 is when they kind of came up, came up but there, there are some block some some things that call themselves blockchains that are not really blockchains and that's where you can get in trouble so definitely do your homework none of this i should have said None of this is legal advice or financial advice. Mm -hmm. I'm not your attorney. Um, and, and it is a wild west out there. Things are so moving a lot, so make sure you do your own homework. Thank you for bringing that up. Uh, so, gentlemen, would you be uh, interested in helping me uh, funding mission to finding a life on Mars? Yes, sir. <laughs> okay, I'll let you talk about that. Yeah, yeah we'll, we'll be here all weekend. I think we might have just started Mars Dow. I think. <laughs> well, if to throw out a quick disclaimer here: there is the name Mars Dow is taken, but the mission of a Mars Dow is not. Mm. Maybe the Dow of Mars. Mm. <laughs> um, yes, yeah, so I've worked with some NFT projects in the past, and one of the interesting things about decentralized organizations is uh, they have a habit of eventually becoming centralized in one way or another. Yeah. So how are you guys planning on handling things like whales buying up large stakes of Moondow and then kind of siphoning everyone out making Moondow their own if it is an open access uh, platform? Great question. Yeah, so what happens is that if somebody buys more than 50% of the tokens, technically they have over, you have, you know, power over the whole thing taking over. That's what we, that's what we refer to as a whale in the Web3 space. Um, and for Moondow in our constitution, we made it so that the square root of the number of tokens is your voting power. So by square rooting the, the number of tokens, that makes it so that there can't be a will, uh, uh, theoretically. And then also, uh, we we're pretty blessed within our community that the, the power is pretty well distributed. We don't have any anybody owning more than 10%, as far as I know, and even that square rooted. But that's a great question. And then in our constitution, we, we do have some points of centralization. The, the reality is that a community that wants to do something, somebody has to actually move or have an idea. So we we actually literally followed the U.S. Constitution for Moondow's Constitution, and we have we have what we call the Senate. Uh, we have the executive branch, who we call uh, astronauts, and each one has different power. And you know we all agreed to the Constitution by voting on it. So we're self-governing ourselves by through this, and then um, and then there's a there's a clause where we can amend it. You know if, if as we go if things we find that we need to shift, but that's a really good point. Um, 
yeah, that's one of the things that we really need to watch out for. That comes back to some some of us, you know, sometimes the greed gets the best of us, and we want all the power to ourselves. And that's what the kind of stuff that we have to be really, really vigilant enough. Great question. Thank you. Again, um, you were mentioning that you use these NFTs as title to represent a, um, a asset like a spacecraft or a spaceship sometimes. Uh, assets, uh, spacecraft to wear out or they are destroyed or blossom. What happens if the asset um, is unusable before its usable life is um, exceeded? And what happens? To that asset and the value represented in that asset when the um, usable life or yeah. asset is exceeded and it is put in, into salvage. Another thing is uh, you're going to have to build a resort for your party room. <laughs> yeah, build a resort, you think? Yeah, that's that's really like good. that we'll have to build it, but we will need one on the moon. Yeah, and, <laughs> and, and then really quick to the point about about the asset dying off or kind of living out its its, its lifespan. Salvage. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, so um, that's a really good point. We you know I haven't thought about that. I think we need to have you yeah. join. I'll uh, actually throw out a I'll throw out an example about that too. Though is that your car comes with a title. If you don't have the title, you do not legally own your car. And in that sense, it's the same way that the depreciating asset is somewhat independent of the title itself. The title is purely to represent your ownership stake. What happens to that asset is the is a matter of course. Yeah, but yeah. there's a value associated to that asset. Yes. What happens to that value when it's you well? Know, so you can say that. Right? I mean, the title of your car is going to change in value over time, and the value of that NFT may change over time as well. 